Good morning. My sincere thanks to President Burwell, Dean Wilkins, Chairman Castle, distinguished faculty, guests, and of course the students for inviting me here this, this morning. It is very, very special to be here, truly special. I've been encountering students for the last hour or two and I'm seeing you all around Washington all the time, taking the bus to your internships and to class, and there's such a commitment here at American University. But really it's the students I want to talk to today. And let me express my sincere thanks to the School of Public Affairs, the graduates, their families here today, their friends here today. I am truly honored to be here to celebrate your academic accomplishments and your graduation from American University. A few minutes ago, I just took a selfie with the president, but I think I, I want to make sure I'm on airplane mode here. I'm a reporter, so you never turn off your phone, but if a member of the Trump cabinet is fired while I'm speaking, will someone please raise their hand? <laughs> Let me know. Thank you. You never know these days. Truly, you never know. Scott Pruitt, I'm looking at you, but no. <laughs> On a personal note, I grew up in a family of four children. Both my mother and father are practicing lawyers. And to, to my parents' chagrin, as you might imagine, not one of their four children has gone to law school. So my parents, believe me, share in the excitement that I will receive an honorary degree, just did a doctor of laws. So happy Mother's Day, Mom. <laughs> Finally a lawyer, I guess. SPA graduate for the best. You are truly, I've been reading a lot, hearing a lot about you from the dean and the president, and let me tell you, you are truly a unique and special group of graduates. You are about to join a distinguished group of SPA alumni from around the world. What makes you special is that you have made a serious commitment to study public affairs, to participate in challenging internships, and to draw on the scholarship and expertise of the SPA faculty. Your research and your studies took you deep into state and federal politics, the challenging issues of poverty, social media policy, criminal justice, climate change, and the environment. Your commitment to studying and mastering and influencing public affairs does not end with your graduation. This country needs you, talented, intelligent young men and women, working to solve our nation's problems, and you are well prepared. Accept the high expectations people have for you today and tomorrow. Now, after all of your hard work, we are here because it is your special day. And the official title for commencement, according to my dictionary app on the phone, you have to look these things up, is the beginning of something. As I thought about my remarks today, I said, what is that something? This is a question facing every one of you, every graduate, as you step out into a complex and changing world. It is a question that each person must answer on numerous personal and professional fronts, often in conflict with each other. And as we think about that something, I am not here to forecast, to lecture, or to make a statement about how wonderful or terrible our world is today. My goal here is brief and simple, to share three concepts with you as you consider this new beginning. And I hope you will set a framework for your exploration and consideration as you think about your something. The first point, assume nothing. That's what I have on my desk at the Washington Post. The second is to find your passion. And the third is to never become discouraged. Why do I start with assume nothing? Because I'm a reporter and I must keep this front and center every day. And if the last 24 months have not confirmed the validity of assuming nothing, then nothing will. Just a few examples. Of course, President Trump's election. I can I can tell you that we did not expect that at the Washington Post. I was with him on the plane as he's eating Big Macs with me, eating Starburst, watching Fox News, and he said I was going to be the next he was going to be the next president of the United States. No one believed it. Assume nothing. You have a 48-year-old House Speaker retiring. You have my hometown Philadelphia Eagles winning the Super Bowl. Not the most important Eagles, of course, but still important to me this year. And you have a possible summit. We're still going to see how that shakes out with North Korea on the horizon. All these events, 
the experts never forecast, they never said that they were going to happen. How many of today's political, legal, and cultural assumptions will be shattered over the next 24 months? Your guess is as good as mine. More importantly, starting tomorrow, your work will be to create positive change that will make the future better in so many ways. Believe me, you have the brains and the backbone to destroy the negative assumptions that are hurting our country. By assuming nothing, you will be forced to take reasonable risks and make tough decisions when you believe you are on the right course. If your job involves public review of your work, you should be prepared for plenty of feedback. Do not expect the world to quickly embrace your theory or your observations. The First Amendment gives and takes. A personal example from three years ago, talking about President Trump, who I've spent a lot of time covering. It was February of 2015, months before he formally announced his candidacy. I wrote a front page story for The Post on his potential campaign. It was met with laughs and ridicule from many quarters. Never happened, impossible, I must be joking. I re received unsolicited feedback many times to make sure that I understood that this was po not possible. The Post, they stood by my story, they say to figure out where the country's going to follow it, and the rest is history. And that was a big part of the last few years, but getting one story right is certainly not a career. In a 24-hour news cycle, it is quickly forgotten. Inside of the newsroom, it's always about what's next. But it's very important in the pace of where we live and how we work to get the story right, to get it right and finished on time. This is the standard for my jobs at the Washington Post, NBC News, and at PBS. The public expects, rightly so, nothing less. The assume nothing rule includes your career. The days of a clearly defined path are long gone. Be ready for change. I was very fortunate, as the provost said, and to, to have Gwen Eiffel as my mentor. She gave me the chance to be on her award-winning show, Washington Week. And I was very nervous when I started, making mistakes. She provided support, insight, and guidance. In every project Gwen undertook, she was the paragon journalist and a wonderful person. Her tragic, untimely death a couple years ago was a true shock. Never did I expect or assume or believe that five months later I would be selected to be the moderator for Washington Week on PBS. And I will never fill her shoes, but her commitment to excellence in journalism is my guiding star. Second point, find your passion. There is a big difference between an interest and an activity and a passion. I always had a great interest in baseball, still do. I'm a Phillies fan and the Nats are wearing on me. I'm getting into the Nats. But by third grade, it was clear baseball was not a realistic career choice. I thought I was good at third base, but no. Politics and journalism provided me an opportunity to learn new things each day and to fully participate in the great process of how our country, America, is governed. From high school debating days, where a lot of my friends went on to AU and I'm still keeping close touch with them, I knew and I found out that politics and journalism were my passion. I was fortunate to have found my something. Do not fear making a difficult decision and a public commitment. Embrace your passion and fasten your seatbelt. It is a long, long race. I know I'm only 32, but believe me, it's a long race. And you will have your good days and your unexpected disasters. Winston Churchill, who I studied at Cambridge, said it best. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And if your something involves having people or institutions make real change, you are probably looking at a lifetime commitment. Not the easiest course to take. However, in the long term, it will be very fulfilling. Always be practical and keep in mind the words of Mark Twain. He said, I like progress. It is change I don't like. Still holds true today in so many fields. You are exceptionally well prepared to be change leaders from your studies here at the School of Public Affairs and your career experiences throughout Washington and the world. You have the academic knowledge to make sure that you can make positive change, real change. Focus and commitment right now for you is the key. Your passion to address child hunger or mines or political gerrymandering, that's going to have setbacks, it's going to have challenges, think short term but also think long-term. Never be afraid to listen to different voices 
from different generations or different perspectives outside of your comfort zone. It may be similar to what Mark Twain said. People sometimes are just resistant to change, but have the conversation. Third and final point, never become discouraged. Every hero or heroine has faced insurmountable obstacles and found a way to succeed. You may remember post-Civil War, the 15th Amendment made it illegal for the federal or state government to deny a male United States citizen the right to vote. For many hard to understand reasons, the right to vote did not apply to women. But brave women did not give up. They saw injustice and worked to change the law. When I really think about my own inspirations. I think back to my paternal great-grandmother. She served in France during the First World War as a nurse on the front lines. She graduated first in her nursing class. She returned to the United States in 1919 after three years of honorable service and in 1919, she could not vote. In 2020, very, very short time from now, we will celebrate the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment. The intrepid women who started and sustained the voting rights movement did not live to see its passage. Many of them did not. But they never gave up hope, and they passed the torch to the next generation of women to continue that good fight. My great-grandmother, she proudly voted in 1920. And now today, the responsibility of leadership has truly been placed on your shoulders. You must decide how to use your talents and fulfill your passions and find your personal something. The issues facing this country, which I travel around all the time as a reporter, and you see it up close, are too important and too tough for you to get discouraged, you need to be the leaders. Remember Dr. Martin Luther King, who continues to inspire us all, and his forever timely advice. Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? He set the example for us all, and we must continue to face up to his challenge. So enjoy your special day. And as you depart from American University and say goodbye to faculty members and friends, don't be sad that it's over. Smile that it happened. Thank you and congratulations.